Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a map. That is correct, a map of the United States. So, a while back, uh, I can't remember when this was. Was this in 2012? This was made. Might be before then, it might be 2013. I don't remember. So, obviously, there was a time period where, for whatever reason, zombies were insanely popular to the point where, um, universities were running SIR models to to determine how like to determine what would happen in the zombie apocalypse um, I believe they're called SIR models which are just a way of tracking um, infectious diseases and how their spread would go and it was just tweaked to apply to a zombie apocalypse so there were there are a billion things going on with that kind of thing okay um, and one of the things that happened out of I think this was Cornell University, came this. Zombie Town USA map on github.io. Um, but this was one of the things that came out of it. And it's actually kind of interesting and kind of cool. There are other simulators that are like this, um, done in different ways. I'm, I'm very sad that I can't remember a different one, which is on a less... This is on like a, 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 a macro... Uh, a, yeah, a macro scale. Very. This is a macro scaled thing. There is another simulator that I know of that was a more micro scaled thing. So you could set the number of people that were in this like little area, and you could also set how big the area was going to be, and then how many of these people were, would have guns, how tough the zombies would be, how fast the zombies would be, etc., etc. And you could see how long it took for the situation to finish itself in that small little area. So there was a micro level um simulator that was really interesting but i don't you know i don't i don't know what that is i don't have that on uh saved to my favorites on my old pc because that's what this was on this was saved to my favorites on my old pc and i kept going past it every once in a while whenever i'm looking through my favorites on that pc and i was like oh well maybe one of these days i'll just go look at this again so here we are that's what we're doing we're doing this right now we're going to look at this um and this i think this was shortly after the the height of zombie browser games so you know i played a lot of zombie browser games back in the day you know uh, not that i know all of the names of these zombie browser games i know one of them was die tonight um another one was a game called urban dead which was an interesting and fun game and of course uh dead frontier is another one i don't know if the if dead frontier the original is still playable and up I don't know, I don't think Urban Dead is playable and up anymore either. I think that's dead. Die Tonight is still clinging to life, but it's pathetic now. Um, but yeah, if Dead Frontier is still around, because we wanted to do something with Dead Frontier 2, so if Dead Frontier 1 is still hanging around, I might do like a 20 minute video on that, just to, as, you know, kind of something to compare and contrast to, I guess. Um, but those are kinds of the things. Those were some of the older browser games you'd have. And then, of course, there were millions of Flash games, zombie Flash games. Um, and I say millions, it's obviously an exaggeration, just for, there's a lot. Um, what else would there be? There's, you know, that was also the time where you could, like, pre-register um, for some of those Flash games. You could play the betas of them. And I did that for one. I just can't remember the name of it. It might have been something like Pandemic or something like that. I don't know. I can't remember the names of these things, but I figured this would be interesting. This was also, there There were also um, a lot of choose-your-own-adventure text-based zombie browser games at that time, too, which hopefully I can find at least, like, one of those still lying around somewhere, because those were interesting, and I, I would like to share those with you. But for right now, what we're looking at is the map of the United States of America, and this is Zombie Town USA, um, and you can see the URL there because of how I have this all set up, so that's cool. Alright, so we got a few things marked down here, and I have to try to remember exactly what all of these mean. Um, so, firstly, you have these Greek letters, which is the kill-to-bite ratio. So that this ratio right here is how likely a zombie is to be killed by a person. So this ratio is just a simplified version of how likely humans are to be able to kill zombies because um, some simulators take into account the amount you can set the amount of guns per square mile or something and that this doesn't do that so this instead just has the kill to 
byte ratio as an example of of you just take into however well you think humans would do okay the next thing is just how far a zombie can go in a in a given day you know so that's just that's you don't have to figure that out but it's you know obviously slower zombies are more easy for the populations to deal with than fast zombies and then step draw to my understanding this number is just how many simulations that the program runs before it shows you anything because uh, all of this is just simulated data so I don't fully remember how the kill to bite ratio works um, it is if you set it to one that means that so if you said I know that if you set it to one it means that the chance of a human being killed by a zombie is equal to the chance of a human killing a zombie because that's all that stands for is how likely one of those two outcomes is um, it starts off with the human being slightly advantaged over the zombie but you can change that if you believe that's a bunch of hogwash I'm gonna leave it I'm going to leave zombies at relatively slow speed but I will adjust the step to draw usually I like to put it somewhere around 600 if I can actually land that on the number cool okay cool and then what you do is you just click on a place and this whole map uh, numbers some numbers that aren't given to you and they're only given to you in terms of colored lights uh, obviously this is based off the US census so if you pick some place far off where there aren't many people the zombie apocalypse might not do very well because the zombies might die too fast um, if you pick some place super populated with people it might spread like crazy so you set one zombie and you just see what happens so what we're going to do if we had a place if we had to think of where zombie apocalypse would start uh, I would say Florida because Florida is just a cacophony of errors in terms of it's just filled with old people crocodiles and hurricanes um, <laughs> but otherwise it'd be you know the northeast or in California that's typically where every time you get a zombie apocalypse is typically in the northeast or it's in California because there's just the large populations and health and large health centers I mean that's another thing usually zombie movies always take place in large health centers but if I'm recalling correctly uh, we're gonna do nor we're gonna do the Northeast because uh, one of the first Romero movies happened in Pennsylvania um, I don't know if it started in Pennsylvania but it that the zombie like the movie itself was in Pennsylvania I'm not I don't know if the zombie apocalypse started in Pennsylvania I would assume that this light here might be around Pittsburgh though again I'm not so good at geography especially when I'm looking at geography like this this is not my preferred type of map layout like if I had terrain uh, indicators it'd be easier for me to pick out where Pittsburgh was because I'd have I'd have more indications of it so uh, I'm gonna go that I'm just going to assume this is around Pittsburgh so we're gonna start the zombie apocalypse right here and then it's that helps because it also doesn't have to cross over uh, the Appalachians I mean it's still it's it's on a little bit on the Appalachians it still does have to cross the Appalachians but it doesn't have to cross the Appalachians to get to the majority of the United States so it's already past there it, can, it, it has a little bit easier of access to the rest of the United States and it only has to cross over to get to this weakened pathetic area or it could just spread so far down that it can kind of get around the worst parts of the Appalachian uh, so it has all that going for it so that's I think this is a good spot to start the zombie apocalypse Pittsburgh's uh, regional medical center Okay, well, the, the zombie immediately died. <laughs> Sometimes that happens, folks. Sometimes the poor little dumb zombie uh, gets killed pretty quick. So in three hours' time in Pittsburgh, the zombies got murdered. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Let's try again. All right, still didn't work. I gotta tell you, Pittsburgh just... Okay, so I went a little over Pittsburgh there, so probably around more of uh, the suburb areas, Allentown, maybe around that section. Uh, AKA, it would just be more in the rural area, so it probably is actually further past Allentown. Um, that started it, so I guess you can't just start it in the in the main areas for whatever reason. Maybe because of just how many interactions are possible in such a brief period of time, the zombie just loses out on that on the those rolls of the dice. But at that point, once you do get a place that works, you got to just kind of sit and you got to see what happens. And so right now we're seeing what happens. So this is the spread of the zombie apocalypse. 
after 95 hours, this is how far, according to the parameters we set, that the, that the apocalypse is going to go. And it doesn't look like it's going to stop, either. It doesn't look like humans are going to win this one. Um, these are very slow-moving zombies, so that's part of the thing of why it's not like, zoom through. So you can play, again, we'll play with the parameters, we'll change it a little bit, we'll increase the speed of the zombies, and we'll see how fast we can ruin uh, humanity's life. Because we're bad people like that, I guess. Um, some notes here that I do want to talk about real briefly. There was another paper I saw a long time ago about zombie apocalypse using the SIR model. And not taking into account humans being able to fight back. It was like, oh, humans will be wiped out and in almost a hundred hours or something like that. It was something dumb because it's like it didn't take into any accounts of humans fighting back or being able to hide or anything like that. But then they did one where they followed up and they basically came to the conclusion that it would take, I think it was like 10,000 days before human population would stop decreasing and would start increasing again. I think that was what their estimate was after they'd run the SAR models and, and did, uh, you know, tests for like you know, taking into account humans being able to fight back and all of that, and they were like, okay, so you got about 10,000 days, where a couple of, so that would be, I don't know how you do the math of 10,000 divided by 365, that's a, that's a, but that's a couple of years, that's a significant amount of years where the human population would just keep decreasing, and it, would, it wasn't until after that 10,000, around that 10,000 day mark where the human population starts to increase again, starts to rebound. Seems like the zombie population's uh, ability to progress has significantly slowed down. I wish we could zoom in, because you can see here, you can kind of see like these little tendril things, right? Where it's just trying to spread, but it's not quite getting there, you know? It's having some problems up here in the Michigan and Ohio regions, which is kind of weird, because Ohio... Well, actually, I think this would be a little bit past Ohio, wouldn't it? I don't... Again, I don't know my geography very well, as you can clearly tell. Seems to be having some problems, but this you would think this is a little bit more, there's a lot more rural areas around here. You'd think it'd still be able to kind of get through that, but maybe maybe there's some element to this where they take into account uh, the people knowing after 200 hours of this that, oh shit, there's something going wrong. Um, although, again, 204 hours, we could say, we'll just go 204 hours. You know, divide that by 24 to figure out how many days that's been. It's not been a significant amount of days. There's a weird surviving area here. That's interesting. Very interesting. I wonder what this, where this is. I wonder why that's a, there must be some geographical isolation available to that area for it to be seemingly surviving like Poland in the Black, in, in the Black Plague. <laughs> um, I don't think that these are actually these two spots here, I'm pretty sure those are also infected. So maybe that's also infected. Maybe just a way of how the colors work on this, that it's a little weird. I don't know. But we got a slow... This is very slow. It, it looks like it would take quite a bit of time for the zombies to eventually get all the way over there, which is what you would expect. And there's not a way to speed this up in terms of, like, just speeding up the simulations. Oh, maybe this. I don't... Maybe step to draw is actually affecting how... Uh... Again, I don't know the the rules of the, of of step to draw because there isn't a clear definition here of the parameter of step to draw. You know, you think they would have that, but they didn't. But I'm pretty sure it's just the amount of simulations it runs before any kind of render happens here. So I think that less step to draw would speed it up. If I had a calculator, so what do we got? We'll we'll do 250 divided by 24. Uh, so after 10 days little more than 10 days. This is where we'd be in the zombie apocalypse according to the simulation. According to all the parameters we've set, humanity has been pretty well fucked in 10 days. You know, it spread pretty well. And that's what you'd kind of expect. I mean, if any, I assume there'd be no SIR model. You'd have to tweak some parts about the SIR model, I suppose, because it doesn't fully work for zombies. But you would expect the zombies to spread out much faster in the first month of infection than in than later on because a you know more humans are just available to be infected but b the humans aren't properly fighting back you know you're gonna have quarantines from the military and things of that nature but they're not going to you know the average citizen isn't going to fully grasp what's going on right and the military is going to think oh we might be able to do xyz quarantines might work until they doesn't and then so you'd expect 
human preparedness pre 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 preparedness <laughs> to be less effective in the early month of the zombie apocalypse than in the next three. And you'd also expect some amounts of government control on media um, in an event like this, because this would be a national emergency, so you'd expect the government to be limiting certain media because they wouldn't want people to know how bad this is. Like, they're trying to keep it on the D-low because they don't want everyone to just start panicking and freaking out. So you'd expect some amount of ignorance con con uh, that could be contributed to the government trying to, like, put the kibosh on this. Be like, everything be quiet until we figure this out. Um, you know, we don't want people panicking and shooting their neighbors and all that. Just let us handle this, and we'll tell you what you, what you, the bare elements of what you need to know, which is getting your house locked your door. You know, you'd have the, the, the good old Romero. Uh, I don't know if anyone even remembers some of these older Romeros, but the oldest, like the old Romeros brought the, um, brought the zombie franchise, the, um, you know, the, Every, basically, almost every zombie movie you see nowadays, there's always that that news reporter who says, "Stay in." The government is saying, "Stay indoors, you know, stay inside, lock your doors, draw your windows, you know, stay out of sight," kind of deal. You, that that was something that Romero, his movies, I believe, were the first ones to have that just become like, and then they they influenced. I mean, obviously, Romero influenced the whole, um, a lot about cinema, but in terms of zombie cinema. His works are probably the most influential. I believe it was also, like I said, I believe it's his works that that kind of made that a staple of zombie films. That the first things that, like the very early hours, early days of the infection, that's what that's what survivors are told: just stay inside, lock your doors, stay out of sight. Um, and and there's no further context usually given. It's just that's just do that because this is a state of national emergency. And the military will be here soon. And, of course, it also benefits the military that, you know, normal people are hopefully staying inside and out of sight. Because that means they don't have to guess whenever they're walking around shooting things. It's like, that's a zombie, that's a zombie, that's a zombie. Cool. They don't have to be like, ma'am, are you a zombie? Yes, no. <laughs> like, if everybody's following the rules and staying indoors, it makes their job much easier. But, of course, people aren't going to stay inside because they're going to try to get away from the situation, which is a perfectly reasonable thing. The unfortunate element, too, as well, this is why you have quarantines, is because someone might be infected and drag it with them, etc., etc. In terms of horrific uh, instances like Ebola, like, uh, you know, zombie apocalypse, think of the bird flu, I guess, could be one. Uh, you know, if the, if the bubonic plague showed back up, etc., etc., um... There's a certain amount of just, it sucks that you're infected, we'll try to give you treatment, but we have to just deny you all of your individual liberties, because, quite frankly, you're posing a threat to the rest of the nation. And it's like, sorry, pal, you're going into quarantine, you're not talking to anybody. Um, if you have to die to save the rest of us, then you die. In the case of a zombie apocalypse, that's very, that's a very... That's, that's what they would do. They would just be like, sorry, you have to stay in this area. And yeah, I know that there are zombies roaming around this area too. And that sucks for you, but we're not going to take the chance of someone just roaming around and getting people killed. You know, typically, though, I would assume uh, that they would try to put whatever healthy surviving adults, that, and adults, you know, most kids would probably all die and elderly people would probably all die, but any surviving healthy humans or you know in one area any humans that were suspect you're not quite sure if they're healthy in another area and then you know then there's the region that's just zombie filled you know like i'm assuming that there'd be multiple levels of quarantine uh, because it's certainly you know in, in terms of the united states we certainly have the military and police force capable of providing that kind of thing of having enough bodies to provide that kind of thing but let's let's take the calc let's get the old calculator back out Let's see, 392 divided by 24. Uh, so after 16 days, 16 and a third day, so 16.3333 repeating, um, the entire, almost the entire Northeast United States is just, is fucked, looks like. You know, you got a bit of Northern Michigan hanging on, uh, and you got, you know, Maine and New Hampshire and Vermont, it looks like, uh, hanging on. It might be like the very, very tipsy top of, of 
Massachusetts hanging on there. Again, I'm not great at my uh, U.S. geography. I can do much better with U.S. geography if I have the boundaries, and I can name all, you know, then I can put all the 50 states in the proper place as long as I have the boundaries available to me. But without any kind of boundaries, you know, I'm not not going to do in the best. I mean, just how it is. So I'm going to try to do a couple of tests here. We're going to reset this. You know, we're still keeping them Romero style. That's how I like my life. Romero style zombies. I don't believe in those running zombies. I'm like, that for various reasons. Number one, there's a whole bunch of wrong with zombies to begin with, but you know, you're not going to have running zombies. That's just insanity. Their their limbs aren't going to hang aren't going to be able to maintain that the strain of running. I mean, again, their limbs aren't going to be able to maintain the strain of most things, but running is certainly not going to work out. Uh, but it's also interesting whenever people run these models of like what's going on with zombies because they aren't really taking into account weather. Because I do think that in very, very hot areas, you probably have zombies decaying faster. Obviously, in very, very cold areas, you'd have the zombies just freeze. I mean, there's nothing the zombie can do to keep itself from freezing. Even in not even... You don't even have to have very, very cold. You can just have moderately cold. I think zombies would still freeze because they have no internal heat controls. Uh, like, the other thing, too, uh, that, I, that I... Like, there's never, any, like, any... Seemingly, any consideration for the, the fact that the zombies really can't maintain their, their health. You know, like they're, if it's not like, whatever injuries it got prior to being reanimated, or it, it it just has those. You know, if a zombie has a dislocated shoulder, it's got a dislocated shoulder. It never gets that back. You know, if if it has a torn Achilles, it has a torn Achilles. It never gets that back. But also, you know, it would degrade itself pretty quickly by running, by you know, by putting all the force, because they just go like a hundred percent of every action they have is full force. You know, so you would expect them to rip and tear their ligaments pretty quick. Or at least I would expect it. Unless there's some kind of magic mysticism that I'm not aware of in the zombie literature. Other than just, they're zombies, shut up, don't ask questions. I don't know. There are zombies that- wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I clicked over here. Somehow some zombies popped up over here. Uh, some of the, someone got on a plane, I think, while they were sick. Shouldn't have done that. So in this simulation, the zombies have invaded the West Coast. Oh, God. Oh, no. Surprise, bitches. We're here. I, I do like the zombies being uh, set to not just murder people. But again, that doesn't seem fully... Um, it's, you don't have enough control. You know, that's that's with this particular simulation, you just don't got enough control. Like, I... Because people should be dying a little bit easier in the, you know, they shouldn't be doing as well at fighting back the zombies in the first, you know, couple of days of it, right? It shouldn't be until later on that they start doing a little bit better at fighting because they kind of figure this shit out. Um, you know, rural areas should probably do better at fighting than than urban areas because of a population density being less. So you know, you don't just got a case of just there's a fuck ton of zombies all of a sudden. <laughs> Um, but also urban area or rural areas, excuse me, rural, rural areas tend to have more firearms than urban areas. So, in terms of just what normal people would have, we're not counting police force because, of course, I'm assuming the police force in an urban area would have more firearms than a rural area, just because that police force would probably have more money to buy that kind of stuff. But, you know, the the average person in a rural area is going to probably have a gun compared to, like, probably more, way more likely, I would say, to have a gun on them, or at least pretty close proximity than an urban area. So if the zombie apocalypse breaks out, you know, it's like, oh, an urban area, maybe it spreads a little bit quick, you know, but, like, in a rural area, it doesn't spread that fast, and it's like, oh, shit, I'm just going to go get me my hunting rifle and shoot this thing right in its head. Um... And of course, that's always been my case. Of whenever these these studies try to say like, "Oh, the zombie apocalypse, everyone would be fucked," it's like, I don't know about that because I mean, I have so much ammunition in this house, up in the up in the attic. I have you know most people that I know of in in rural PA, Western PA where I live, have a shit ton of ammunition, for just for fun and for hunting, both both options. Uh, you know, we're dealing with hunting rifles. We're not dealing with people who haven't shot either. So these are people who know how to shoot a target. Um, you, if 
you know, so it's like, there's some element of just like, I don't, I don't think the zombie apocalypse does very well in a rural area, like, I feel like it would get kind of, you know, like, I, I think, I think there's not enough credit being given to the shooting abilities of rural America. Obviously, urban areas are just fucked. I mean, no matter how good of shots your police force are, it's like, there's just way too many people, you know, that's just a clusterfuck waiting to happen. But I think rural areas could definitely do better. And it also makes it much easier for the military to quarantine a rural area because it's spreading so much slower. So, I don't know. There's so many. There are so many factors you'd have to consider for a true, true simulation of the zombie apocalypse that I just don't think that there are any simulations that can come anywhere close to accurately presenting what could happen in a zombie apocalypse. Um, but the simulations that we do have are based off of the models for other diseases and at least they show a decent at least they're they're decent for trying to show the spread of a zombie apocalypse and where might you be the safest if a zombie apocalypse began somewhere because what are, what are the areas that have the most geographic isolation i mean that's going to be the places that are the safest against a zombie apocalypse as well as what places have the least population density of course i mean this is all just basic stuff that most people would know anyway like you'd want to be in alaska for an example because population density is very very low um it's also fucking cold there so have fun zombies have fun figuring that out um and there is elements of geographical isolation in terms of it's just difficult to like to walk across alaska you know or you would want to be in the middle of the Appalachians because it's really hard to climb the app, like to, to climb and trudge across the Appalachians. So it would be hard for zombies to really get around and cut through the Appalachians, you know? And it would be like, well, would a really large force of zombies follow the leader through the Appalachians? I don't know. It would take them a long ass time. I don't know if they could stay focused enough to do that. I'm surprised that it's running, that the simulator here is running into so much trouble right on this region over here. Because uh, this shouldn't, there shouldn't, this shouldn't, this whole area, like, there's no natural mountain that's, like, cutting across this whole thing. Like, that's what it would look like to the visual eye. It'd be like, well, there must be some kind of weird, or this whole region is, is too rural. But I, I that's not the case. I mean, there, there are elements of rural in some of this area. And there are some area, some, you know, you're still dealing with some terrain problems, but it shouldn't be this difficult for the, for the thing to spread. You think it would start spreading around, you know, like kind of doing what's going on here, where it just started ripping through an urban area, right? Like the zombies are just ripping through an urban area over here, and they're outpacing the zombies that kind of got stuck. You know, there's a little divot here. They kind of got stuck. This is a little bit too rural for them. They're a little bit stuck there, you know? So you'd expect something like that, and I guess you kind of see it now. Seems like there's a little divot, and then a further divot up here. You know, but they're kind of getting through the Massachusetts area because it's a little bit easier for them to find roads to walk across, to find people to murder, so on and so forth. These zombies, these zombies down here, they're having a blast. They're like, look at all these people we get to murder. We got some nice roads, makes it easy to walk across this distance. This is great. Looks like they've kind of gotten past the divot a little bit, only because uh, whatever was stopping them, they've kind of just circled around it. <laughs> Which is a way to wipe out any survivors, you know. There's, you can have a pocket of survivors, but how long is that pocket going to last if they're completely isolated? They're going to eventually run out of supplies, they're going to eventually need to travel just a bit too far, and they're going to run out into the horde eventually and get murdered. Speeding up the ability of these zombies to move a little bit, you know, definitely has impacted their ability to uh, rip through the U.S. I still think that they're probably Romero style. Like, I don't think these are running zombies because, again, if, I, if they were running zombies, I'm pretty sure they would fuck everybody up. Like, I don't think that they would have this much difficulty. But man, also this this simulation does not take into seemingly seemingly because I'm pretty sure I misclicked over here and accidentally started a pocket on over there. But it seemingly doesn't take into consideration that early on in the zombie apocalypse, there's going to be some assholes who travel by plane because they don't know they're sick. You know, they're just like, I got bit by a crazy homeless man. That's a reference to, I think, Shaun of the Dead. Um, I think one of the first complaints was that a homeless man bit somebody. 
but um you know you would have people who would still get on planes you know who would, because they wouldn't know that they're that this isn't something they should be doing you would have people get on a ship or something you would have people just drive to go you know like, oh, I was visiting Pennsylvania I got bit by some fucking weird ass zombie like weird ass homeless man punched him in the face and I left and I got in my car and I drove back to Wisconsin where I live and then I you know turns out I brought the zombie apocalypse you would have like weird springs of, of zombie apocalypse but let's start a let's start a trouble in, in, in Texas somewhere if we can I don't know where am I just not allowed to click anymore after you said the initial point is that Oh, yep, there's some bleeding into Texas. Okay, so it did click there. Cool. Uh, click up here. Let's start something up there. Let's reintroduce zombies to, uh, to California. Their native land. <laughs> it's actually not. I guess, I guess, I guess their native land would be... Well, if you go back into the days of voodoo, and then you're gonna claim that as their native land, sure, but... Uh, you know, and then you go to, like, Barbados and, and places like that, but... In terms of zombie cinema, it might be Northeast United States that's the native land for zombies as far as cinema is concerned. Man, Texas is having some problems. Like, the zombies did not have a good time that I threw into Texas. The zombies that I threw into California seemingly just, I don't know, I guess they got immediately murdered somehow, which would not happen. You'll have to be real here. California would be a sitting duck for zombies. Everybody knows it. I don't think there's any way in hell California would would be like I'm doing good with zombies. Like I don't I don't know the gun to human ratio in California, but I don't think it's as impressive as the gun to human ratio in Texas and Pennsylvania. And of course, California is just so densely populated. Like it would just it would just be like the whole state would just be gone, pretty much. It would just be like have fun with that shit. But again, you know you got the Rockies and the Rockies would really be the big. Uh, hindrance if the zombie apocalypse started out in California. It would, the, the Rockies would pretty much keep the rest of America safe. Because it would just be so fucking difficult for zombies to get over it. And if there's any semblance of a military left, you just fly a couple of helicopters up there, you pull a Switzerland, you shoot, do you shoot the zombies as they're sitting ducks walking through <laughs> the Rockies? It's all good. If it starts in Texas, it'll probably die in Texas because there's a million guns in Texas. Everybody has a gun in Texas. If it starts in Louisiana, Everyone there is fucked. Starts in Florida. Everyone there is fucked. I mean, there's all there's in most cases the zombie apocalypse would probably do pretty well. I would end up saying. I mean, the Rockies are the natural defense that are going that's going to stop it. Texas has a lot of guns, and some of these rural states in the Midwest, especially, have a lot of firearms per person. And then of course you have Pennsylvania and Ohio, and and some of the of course some of these southern states, including Mississippi. Um, where you'd be more likely to find guns, but like Florida, population density is a little bit too much for the guns to matter in the rural areas of Florida. Uh, Maine would do fine. I mean, uh, even in the simulation, Maine's pretty much just like, that's cool. I'm glad you're bringing up some zombies. They're kind of working their way in, but we're still a rural enough state and it's cold up here. No, I would expect if it's, uh, you know, in certain states, if it started there, it would just die there. <laughs> I don't think the zombies would particularly do very well in some states and I don't think they would do I think they would excel in a state like California though again with just that population density I think in a state like New York there are large swaths of rural areas in New York but the overall population of New York is just too freaking high there's too many urban areas in New York uh, Pennsylvania you only got like four real big urban areas in Pennsylvania you got Harrisburg Philadelphia Erie and Pittsburgh. Those are the big areas. And Pittsburgh's on one side of the Appalachian. Philadelphia's on the other side of the Appalachian. So, you know, and that's a large amount of rural area in between. I don't know. Pennsylvania would be a difficult one for the zombie apocalypse to start in, that's for sure. And I mean, Texas is, again, Texas, there's just a large portions of rural area in Texas as well. I mean, you got a couple of huge urban centers, huge urban centers. You know, Dallas is a huge urban center, and Dallas would be fucked. But it's just a matter of can the other... Is, is there enough space between the urban centers? Because Texas is a very large state. Is there enough space to mitigate the spread enough in the early, in the early going? Um, 
But also, of course, you're not going to have like a tidy, neat, like, oh, it only started in California. We're all good. I mean, it's probably going to be starting in several areas all at the same time because somebody gets infected somewhere and then they drive somewhere else and yada, 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 like I already detailed. But we will see where we are at. We're almost at that 300 mark. So 300 hours would convert to like, what, 12 and a half days, I think. Right? Because if there's 24 hours in a day... 300 divided by 24 is 12 and a half. Okay, good. So in 12 and a half days, and we can ignore the, the stuff I put in Texas and California. We're just thinking about what, what that original dot in the northeast was. So in, 300, uh, in 12 and a half days, I mean, you know, that started around Pennsylvania. I think we actually started in northern Maryland. I don't, I don't remember where it was. Um, I don't remember where I put the dot for this one. And I... But you got you it got pretty far. It got pretty far. You know, I'm I'm impressed with it. I think it's good. I think that's and I think that's pretty accurate as for in twelve and a half days how far it would would could get. You know, if it said twelve and a half days and it was like already to the Rockies, I'd be like, Okay, well that's a bunch of bullshit because there's so much natural terrain and, and mountains and shit in between this area. I mean, the Appalachians are a hefty issue all in itself. Um, but there's more than just the Appalachians. There's so much rural terrain in between this. It's a lot of distance, too. It's like, you wouldn't expect the zombies just, poof, wildfire, you know? It would be a slow time. It'd be a slow it'd slow go. Um, and, of course, after, like, a couple of... There's a certain amount of time, again, where it's just, like, the government's gonna get their shit together, and the normal public will get their shit together and kind of understand what they're supposed to be doing. But nonetheless, I just wanted to show you guys this this very old, I think it was done in 2013, uh, simulator that that I that I, I I was aware of, and I was like, oh, this, this is interesting. It is kind of interesting, I think. So, and of course, I got to just talk about zombies and stuff, and that was fun. Um, in the future, what we'll be doing, I do have because I do want to go look around for some of those old choose your own adventure browser zombie games basically so I will look through and try to find if I can if I can come across those and I'll and, and then it'll make more sense what the, what I'm actually trying to describe to you when I say choose your own adventure zombie browser game um, once you see one and I'm sure a lot of you have probably played them too I mean if you were you know if you're not like 13 right now if you're 13 right now then maybe you never you know, you kind of maybe, I think you would have missed the browser zombie heyday, but just the heyday of browser games in general, but, you know, I'll try to find a couple of those, and we can, we can maybe look, we can maybe do one or two of those as videos, that might be fun, because um, some of those stories are pretty good. You know, I might do a couple of, of old Flash games, if I can find some older zombie Flash games that are good, maybe we'll do some of those. Dead Frontier, definitely, I'll probably do like 20 minutes in that. Um, and that was that's a browser game. That's not a flash game, but you know, I mean, it is a flash game too. But it's it's more than just a, it's it's it doesn't yeah it's more. Um, let's see. There's another. There is there is a a browser game I can think of. Uh, Dead City. Um, you know, The Last Stand. I think it's Dead City, The Last Stand. You know, I could maybe do a video of that in that because in 20 minutes, I can still show what that game's about, whereas, you know, some other types of browser games, you know, you might have to go for, like, hours and hours and days and days until you can really kind of give a good view of what that shit's about. But you can get a lot of the basic groundwork of Dead, of Dead City, I think. It, no, it's just, it's not Dead City, it's just Dead Zone, I think. I think it's called Dead Zone. I'll, I'll probably do a video on that, if it's still up and operating. Uh, it was on Armor Games. I have to make a new Armored Games account at some point because I lost my password to my old one and I can't remember it at all. Do, 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 do. But that's okay because I never put money into my Armored Games account, so who gives a shit? So we'll try to do some things. That's kind of what this was. It was meant to be a precursor to some of just the old shit that I'm going to go looking for. I'm going to go trying to dig up, see what I can find. How long was this? 49 minutes plus some editing. So it'll probably be around 45 minutes. Maybe I'll do. Maybe I'll. Maybe I'll get rid of some more stuff, and who knows. But yeah, thanks for joining me to stare at a map of the United States and talk about zombies for a little bit. In the future, we will have more.
thing, more interactive things that we can maybe do. I'll see you guys in the next time, and please note that uh, the air zombie is about, and we're all going to die. I'm already dead. I was in Pennsylvania. We got wiped out. Womp womp womp. Damn you, George Romero, for making me put my dot in Pennsylvania first. But again, I would like to see an updated kind of simulation that takes into, like, way more data into into account. So you could have things like, well, what are the, you know, that it runs a chance of, like, someone getting in early. You know, so you'd have it start in several areas and things. That would be cool. Oh, the time, the zombies, the zombies, I guess, petered out. Bullshit, there's no way in hell that California, well, I guess that is, yeah, I guess, I guess. Huh. So apparently, according to this, that's interesting that I vamp, uh, that I talked long enough to, to see the end of the zombie apocalypse. Apparently, once it reaches about halfway in the United States, and it gets to those mid, those less, uh, those more rural mid-U.S. states, midwestern U.S. states, it just, zombies just stand no chance. And they apparently couldn't get through Maine. Which, to some extent, I'd expect that to be the thing. Uh, surprised that southern Texas didn't get ripped to shreds, but... Oh, you know what we should have done? We should have started it in, in Texas to begin with. Because if you remember um, Red Dead Redemption, right? Red Dead Redemption takes place in the frontier. And on Dead Nightmare... I mean, and also, you know, Red Dead Redemption takes you to... I, I think it takes you to the across the border to Mexico for for brief periods of time. In that, in that game. So, you know, we should have started in Mexico for Red Dead Redemption on Dead Nightmare. Great game. I have to do the math here to give us the final assessment of this real briefly. The final assessment. After 514 uh, 14 hours and a little bit of change, 2.22, after that many hours, which would translate to only 21 days 21.4 days uh, this is this is what happened to the United States according to this simulation I don't fully believe it but there are some elements that I would expect that this does fit with good for us it doesn't seem like I'm allowed to restart the zombie apocalypse at this point so that's ain't that a shame ain't that about a bitch or is it just paused might have just been paused. No, no, they died. They all died. But I can. I, but it was paused because now I can restart it if I want by putting in more little pockets. Okay. Yeah, but that's all right. Thanks for watching. Let's talk to you soon. So I kind of looked at the tried to find a choose your own adventure zombie stories and things and all that. I try. I tried a couple of keywords and I guess I'm just too stupid I can't find any so I'll give you kind of an example of what it would be so it would be like a scenario is, is explained to you oh there's just this woman uh, this little girl standing in the middle of the street or something what do you do do you call out to her do you go up to her or do you ignore her and going up to her gets you a bit uh, ignoring her is the proper choice because she's already infected um, <laughs> You know, and I can't remember. I think calling out to her gets her gets her to chase you, and you might have one other opportunity to survive that. But I don't. I don't remember. I think that also kills you. Um, but it'd be things like that. Um, you know, in one of the stories, you, when you're going home, you come across a dude carrying out a TV, and like you get a couple of options of you you could confront the guy or not. There's a scenario as well. Um, when you're leaving your work building, it's like well. The zombie apocalypse has already started. Um, you see someone getting bit. Do you try to help them? Uh, do you take the elevator? Was a, was a, was a question. And obviously, you do not take an elevator because you're gonna be fucking insane to take an elevator. Um, you know, do you just try to like pick up a gun off the ground that the police officer dropped? The answer is no. You just get the fuck out of there because in that particular case, like reaching for the gun and even getting it, uh, it still took too long and you ended up getting killed. I think it's, it's what happened in that in that one, not particular one, but I played a couple of those, and I can't find them because I'm just too stupid, I guess, to put in the proper keywords to, to find them, or maybe they just don't exist because they're all from, like, 2010 to 13. I don't know. So, sorry, I lied. I guess we won't be doing any of those, is what I'm saying. Even though they were really cool and fun. 
I mean, there was one where there's just like a dead dude hanging out in, in a house, and it's like, do you go up to him? Of course you don't. You just quietly walk away into a different room, and eventually you go up into the into your room, and find a letter from your significant other. I don't remember what what their status was. Um, and it's like oh, I went to go visit my I went to go hang out with my parents or something and so now oh, now you know that you got to go to your parents but you could choose to not even go upstairs and then you get the bad ending because your character never knows what happened to his significant other so you have to go up there you have to find the note you have to go and then try to find the significant other yeah you get you guys get it but it was it was fun it was uh, I wish there I wish I could find I wish I knew how to what key words would be necessary if you have for whatever goddamn reason one of those old zombie survival choose your own adventure styled stories save to your browser <laughs> I'll play it because I've probably played it before at some point